Michigan State, Flint's own Charlie Bell was gracious enough to join us on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Thanks for coming on, Charlie. Hey, man. Glad to be here, man. All right. You finished your high school career with 2,146 points, 25.6 points a game. You finished runner-up to Mr. Basketball as Shane Battier in 1997. What was the talent level like in Flint at that time with all the guys that were there with you? Or, at, you know, at other schools? No, it, it was very uh, talented, I think. Especially during that time, I mean, Flint, I mean, which is rich in history as far as basketball is concerned. I mean, we're a basketball city there in Flint. And, um, you know, anytime that they're selling out games and, you know, scalping tickets for two, three hundred dollars for a high school game. I mean, it really just shows, you know, the, the type of level that bas playing basketball was. And um, it, it, was, it, was, it was extremely high at the time. A lot of Division One guys. And, uh, you know, every night you had to strap it up and you had to bring it. You, you know what? Who, if you, I know you're a humble guy, I already know that. I talk to so many people that are like, he's so humble, he's not going to talk about himself. I think that's my job. I'm going to talk about you a lot today. So, in, in, if, if I <laughs> asked you right now, do you know who the all time leading scorer is in the history of Flint basketball? I mean, of course, yeah, of course I know who that is. I mean, it's, it's me. It is Charlie <laughs> Bell. But you know what? I looked up the other people that was it, the Flint at some point. Glenn Rice, Mateen Cleese, Morris Peterson, Jeff Greer, Eric Turner, Terry Furlow, Roy Marble, and Trent Tucker. You are number one all-time scoring more than any of those guys. How does that make you – like, when you think about those names, those are huge names. So, Charlie Bell's a, a pretty big deal. <laughs> you know what? Um, there's a lot of great players that come through there. I mean, you know, I was just fortunate. I mean, some of those guys played on better teams. You know, back in the day, it wasn't no three-point line. I mean, there's a – you can make an argument for a lot of different guys who, who was the best to ever come out of Flint. And, you know, this one, my name is brought up as one of the best. I mean, it's, you know, I always like to tell people numbers don't lie. You know, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. So right. the thing is, you know, I, I scored a lot of points and, you know, I'm very fortunate. And I'm very humble for that. And, you know, um, but I had great teammates and, you know, I was able to do what I, everything I could, you know, to try to help us win. Some of those teams probably won a lot more games than we won, but, at the same time, you know, I'm very happy with my um, high school career. When you were at, when you were still in high school, what was it? Your senior year when when Michigan State started recruiting you, or before that? No, it was before that. Probably, um, I mean, I can't say exactly when, but you know, they was recruiting me definitely before my my senior year. When who else was the, giving you the hard sell to come there? Big, you know, schools that were offering you as well. I think uh, I mean, there's a lot of different schools. I mean, but when I came, when it came down to it, my top five was Michigan State, uh, Michigan, Minnesota, Penn State, and UConn. Those are the five schools that I took visits to. And, you know, ultimately, you know, I felt at home. I felt, you know, the family-type atmosphere at Michigan State, and that's who I chose. Was it – did you know because of – did you have a close relationship in high school with Mateen and Morris and Antonio Smith and all those guys? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we were close. I think um, we were playing against each other. Uh, you know, they were they were they were friends of mine. You know, but I didn't really hang out a lot in high school. It was high school practice and back home. You know, so I mean, I knew those guys. You know, from playing against them, I had a lot of great respect for them because I knew how hard they played and I knew how hard that they, you know, how bad they wanted to win just as much as I wanted to win. And you know, I love their competitive spirit. You know, so that just made it that more. You know, uh, uh, I guess appealing to go and play with them at Michigan State. You knew you knew all that time that you were going to go to Michigan State, or, or was it a last minute thing, or what was it? Um, I didn't, I wouldn't say I knew uh, all along. You know, I wanted to definitely take my business. I mean, I definitely felt at home. I mean, they were probably like the the, the, the school that was recruiting me the hardest. You know, throughout my my high school career. And it was a, definitely a place I felt at home. But at the same time, I wanted to see what else was out there. You know, that's why I went on my other visits. And I went and looked at these other schools. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Michigan State was just a place that, you know, I felt was right for me. So, Charlie, you get to Michigan State. And right away, you start every game your freshman year. And, and I remember, you know, being out, you know, wherever we're at, the Nut House or downtown East Lansing. And somebody was like, who is that right there? And, and you just – it jumped off the screen because you were Defensive Player of the Year, 
you know, for 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 the Big Ten, you you are dominating on defense, but you're filling it up on offense too as a freshman. So, what is the atmosphere like? Does 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 it feel like around you guys? Like you guys know we're right on the edge of winning all this. Did you know that then? No, not my freshman year. I think at the time it was just you know for me I was just happy to be playing. I think you know uh, I know Thomas Kelly was ahead of me. He ended up getting injured. And, uh, you know, that, that's what kind of thrust me into the starting spot. And, um, you know, playing with my team, playing with Mo P, playing with Antonio, you know, and I, and I knew we had something special, but at, at that time, you know, we were just, kind of, you know, just starting out. You know, we were just scratching the surface that year. In 1999, you guys lose a, a, a terrible, man, it was a, a horrible loss. I, I was sick about that to, to Trajan Langdon and Duke. And... Of course, everyone remembers the, the fallout at the campus after that because I think everyone just knew that you guys were better than everybody else. So you're coming into the 2000 season. Do you know now, like, it's 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 our time. We're about to take this championship? I think um, we made it to that first Final Four. And, you know, like you said, playing against Duke, I think, you know, we were shell-shocked. You know, um, a lot of guys would tell you, I mean, you know, for us it was something new. And uh, but at the same time, you know, as that game went on and we were playing against those guys, we kind of like, you know what, we're just as good as these guys. And I think after that game, that's what kind of set things in motion. It, it gave us the confidence. I like, you know, you know, we put the work in and we knew what we're supposed to do. There's, there's no reason why we can't win a national championship. And we're just as good as the Dukes, the North Carolinas, the Kansas, the, all these top programs in the country. We're just as good as them. You, you go into the uh, two games that stand out in that tournament was Eton Thomas and Syracuse, and you guys are down. And, and I'm, I, it feels like all hope is lost. I, I swear, I don't know if you guys can pull it out. And something switched, and all of you just caught fire and locked down defense at halftime. Do you remember any, what was said or anything like that during the and, – and also Marcus Pfizer at Iowa State, you guys were down to them too – and it's like you just something about you hit a switch and you guys just said, okay, let's go hoop. What was said at halftime? Do you remember that at all? Can you hear me, Charlie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was going in and out. But I think those, I think you was talking about the Iowa State and Syracuse games. I think for us, it was kind of like, you know, we knew we, I, I, it's funny because even though we were down in those games, I think we never doubted if we were going to win or lose. I think we just knew that. You know, um, you know, we just keep doing what we do, keep grinding. We're going to win those games. I think if you ask anybody on that team, I mean, there was no doubt in our mind that we were going to win those games. And you, okay, you, you, you guys ended up winning the championship was one of the great moments ever for Spartan fans. And then you, uh, Mo, uh, Mo P and, and Mateen leave, go to the NBA, and you're left there. And as a matter of fact, one a guy that – uh, grew up in the same town as me. Marcus Taylor ended up leaving and going as well. So you're having to take over as point guard in that 2001 season. And I always thought, man, if Charlie could have just stayed at the two and they would have had a, a point guard to run, you guys go back to back. Did you feel like that as well? Um, you know, it's tough. I think, you know, winning a national championship, I think you see a lot of the great teams, you know, that don't win a national championship. I mean, that's why I'm very fortunate that I won one. And went to three Final Fours. I mean, because some people don't go to one Final Four. A lot of great teams don't go to one Final Four. So I think, and then for me to make the three of them and win one national championship, I mean, it is hard to go back to back. I think we had a uh, a good team to win it, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where you know, if it's a seven game series, a five game series, a three game series, yeah, maybe you know we, we come out on top. But you know, sometimes you have a bad half or you have a bad game. Or, a bad 10 minutes. I mean, that's that's something that you can't have once the NCAA tournament starts and you got to like, you got to go, you know, six games in a row. And then that's what makes March Madness so great is that any team, you know, any year can win it all. And, uh, you know, I was just, like I said, I was very fortunate to go to three Final Fours and, you know, um, with Marcus coming in and, you know, Zebo coming in that my team year, I think, you know, we had a chance, but, you know, I think, you know, for us, I think when Mateen and Mo P left, Nobody really expected us to get back to the Final Four. I mean, that's, so that was just an accomplishment in itself. Yeah. So, okay, so you end up with four Big Ten championships, three, like you said, three consecutive Final Fours, uh, a, a national championship in 2000. 
you're the you're a second team All American your senior year. What is the best memory you have of all four years of Michigan State? What's the one thing you think about the most? The the best thing about Michigan State University? Um, I think just being around my teammates. I think just uh, the family atmosphere. Uh, I mean, there's nothing like it. Like I said, I went on different, you know, went on went on visits to four other different schools. You know, throughout my, my pro career, throughout my coaching career now, you know, I see a lot of players. And, you know, I, what I've seen is Michigan State compared to other all these other top programs, there's no other atmosphere that compares to Michigan State as far as, you know, former players, current players, future players, the, you know, the way we connect and, uh, you know, just the connection that we have, you know, even to this day, you know, I can call up any of my teammates you know, I can call up any guy that played at Michigan State or before me or after me. And, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely just a family. I think that's what makes, you know, Michigan State so great. And then in 2015, you were inducted into Michigan State Athletics Hall of Fame. So congratulations for that. What's that like? In the, you know, the eight, 1896, they started playing football at Michigan State. So what do you got, 121, 122 <laughs> years they've been playing sports. And of all the people that have went through there, they inducted you into the Hall of Fame. That's got to be something, quite, quite a feeling. You know what it was, man. When I got that call, you know, telling me, you know, from Hollis telling me that I was going going to the Hall of Fame, it was something that you know, I was shocked. You know, it's something that you don't, you don't, you don't think about. You know, when you go, when you, when I chose to go to Michigan State, it's something that I never dreamed about when I played at Michigan State. It's not even something that I thought about after I graduated. You know, um, you know, for me, I just wanted to win games. You know, for me, I just want to win and have fun. And that's what I did, you know, my four years at Michigan State. And I owe, I owe a lot. You know, I learned a lot about the game. You know, I learned a lot about myself. Uh, you know, I learned a lot about work ethic. I learned a lot of different things from Coach Izzo and everybody there at Michigan State. So, you know, I'm very, you know, happy of everything that I've achieved. And, you know, to go into the Hall of Fame is just, you know, it's just a bonus for me. You it, you uh, ended up with stops, if I'm not mistaken, in Phoenix and Dallas before you picked up in Milwaukee. Is that right? Uh, with stops, but you mean st uh, Skiles? No, no stops. You 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 started in oh stops. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in 2001, you, you know Terry Stops is my coach. So I thought you was thinking right. About Terry Stops, correct. But and then in 2005, you just had a breakout for Milwaukee and went just you went crazy. And I was I was just. I follow, I follow all Spartans all the time, but there was some guys that I really had an affinity for, guys that played with heart and character like you did. You, in 2005, you averaged almost 14 points a game. What was the difference between your senior year at Michigan State and that level of D1 basketball versus playing big-time NBA basketball? What was the difference in your mind? I think everybody's, you know, elite athletes. I think um... – you know, you, you, you have to be smarter. Uh, you have to be just a little bit quicker. But I think, you know, the main thing is just mental. I think, uh, you know, there's great athletes on the college level. There's great athletes on the pro level. But, you know, what makes you know, a pro a pro is his mentality. You know, the way that, it, you know, uh, a pro approaches the game. You know, the, the work ethic, the, the preparation that, you know, that, that, the, that a professional athlete puts into the game. You know, it's just on a different level on the, on the pro level, you know, because everybody can jump, everybody can run fast. So the thing is, you know, separates, you know, pros from amateurs is uh, the mental part of the game. You you uh, told me a little bit about the G League last week when we talked. Could you tell me what what do you do now? You're, you're assistant coach for the Iowa, uh, is it Barnstormers? The Iowa Wolves. Iowa, I, Wolves. Iowa Wolves, yes, Iowa yes. Wolves. You're an assistant coach for them. And then you you uh, also do G League, their G League affiliate. Is that, is that what it is? The NBA's uh, G League affiliate? Yes, we are the Minnesota Timberwolves G League affiliate, the Iowa Wolves, yeah. So you have the aspiration to coach in the NBA someday. That is correct. You know, that is correct. I think, you know, um, you know, I – I was able to, you know, grind it out, you know, as a player, you know, playing in the different minor leagues and, you know, making it to the NBA and becoming successful, and, you know, and, and now it's kind of like, you know, I'm doing the same, you know, and on the coaching level, you know, it's grinding it out in the G League, 